Opinions are cool, but I like stating objective facts. That's why I have composed the definitive ranking of the top 10 best Pokemon of generation one. And I know what you're thinking. This is just my fifth video and I'm already trying to piss people off. Yeah, pretty much. I fully accept the repercussions for making this video, but somebody has to set the record straight. Just have some peace of mind knowing that I use both scientific reasoning and mathematic deduction to uncover the 10 best Pokemon from the original 151. And there were some specific criteria these Pokemon were judged upon, starting with coolness. You see, I like a Chad Pokemon. I like a Pokemon I'd be too afraid to sit with at the lunch table. The type of Pokemon who would shove me into lockers and call me a baby bitch boy back in middle school. Next up, power. Whether that be Herculean strength or speed that rivals that of Barry Allen, these Pokemon had to excel at something better than all the rest. And finally, sex appeal. Yeah, I'm not uh, getting into that one. Let us not wait any longer to lower your IQ. My name is Polywill, and I present to you the top 10 Gen 1 Pokemon of all time. Number 10, Blastoise. Growing up, you were either one of two types of people, a basic bitch Charizard fan or a hipster before hipsters were relevant. Technically, there is a third option, but they were often sitting alone in the back of the bus picking lint out of their belly button. They were me, and it's kind of hard to talk about. Listen, Blastoise doesn't need an explanation of why it's on this list. It's a bipedal turtle with fucking guns. The NRA loves this big guy, and so do I. He's the perfect Pokemon to help wash your car or put a hole in your neighbors. This deadly turtle was one of Pokemon's biggest brand risks, but also one of Pokemon's most lovable starters. Number nine, ditto. Yeah, it's a cop out. But how could a Pokemon that can literally be any other Pokemon not make the list? Sure, laugh at his hubba bubba looking ass while he's in his base form, but once he transforms into Mewtwo, he'll shut you up real quick. Plus, look at that cute derpy face. Dude, the ditto. Not to mention he deserves to be on this list for how often we exploit the pink blob for our sick Pokemon breeding needs. I think giving him the number 9 spot is the least we can do after making him do the deed with these things. Number 8, Agumon. You know what I like about this Pokemon? He's not one, making him possibly the most unique selection on this list. Yeah, I put a Digimon on my top 10 Pokemon list, cry about it. I make the rules here. Agumon makes the list at number eight for two reasons alone. No Pokemon evolution you could show me looks more intimidating than this. Plus, he can talk. You see, Digivolving is a very difficult process. Oh God, I forgot he sounds like that. That's it, get him out of here. Number eight goes to, I don't know, Beedrill or something. Number seven, Pikachu. That's right, I did it. I put the face of the franchise at a measly 7 out of 10. But can you blame me? This little guy has been shown too much love for too long. Someone has to humble this rat, and if I have to be the one to do it, then so be it. I mean, so what you're in every season of the Pokemon anime. Yeah, you're the logo of the official Pokemon coming to YouTube, and you do account for half the merchandising revenue alone. And now you're out here kicking it with Kanye? Get over yourself. Still, who knows where the Pokemon company would be if they would have chosen this as their mascot instead. Number 6. Goldeen. I like Goldeen because he reminds me of a pet fish I had as a kid. He had the same color pattern, the horn, and I'm pretty sure he had the same big dumb lips too. We would do all kinds of fun things together, like I would feed him and look at him. I still remember his last day on earth like it was yesterday. I put him in his fishbowl on the floor for a minute and left the room. And let's just say my dog decided to have a bit of Long John Silvers that day, if you know what I'm saying. Number five. How's it going? Class, this is Stephen Anthony Lawrence, Beans from Disney Channel's Even Stevens, and Muck is the fifth best Pokemon of Gen 1. Yeah, I may have told him this was for a school project. Anyway, you heard Beans right. He said Muck. Why did he choose Muck? Because it was the only damn Pokemon name I could fit in the character limit for the script I sent him. So now I have to conjure up some bullshit reasoning as to why this, this thing right here is the fifth best Gen 1 Pokemon of all time. And listen, I've lied a lot in my life, but this one is too low even for me. We gotta move on. Number four, Arcanine. I love Arcanine because he reminds me of my dog. My dog has a special place in my heart, therefore so does Arcanine. We made so many memories together. The best of which is when he killed my pet fish. Number three, Pikachu. Okay, maybe I feel a little bad about how this list is shaping out. So, I'll write a wrong and give Pikachu the number 3 spot on top of the number 7 spot on the list. Are you happy now? Because you shouldn't be. Look closer. Did somebody order a surprise Sandshrew? Shameless plug, but I've already made an entire video on why Sandshrew is the strongest Pokemon. And as you can tell by this list, I'm a reputable source on Pokemon related subjects. The guy's just bigger, faster, and stronger too. There's nothing else I need to say. And honestly, this one might come back to haunt me as number 3 may be too low for the shrew. Number two, beans. I like getting money, I got time to get it. Target on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in a dash and the stick is with it. 
Love that guy. Number one. Breath of the Wild. 